Hi everyone, I'm Ale, Developer Advocate at TestCube, and in this video series we have uh, very exciting content for you. We have an amazing guest, Dan. He's one of our engineers in our amazing team. Dan, want to say hi? Hey, hey, hello. So my name is Dan Pechev. I'm a software engineer from Belgrade, Serbia, and yeah, I try to do interesting and amazing things in TestCube. Yeah, so today we have an interesting topic about a challenge that we target with TestCube, right? So maybe you can give us an intro about what problem we're targeting with which feature, how we do it, and how this can solve problems for other people and teams that work with Kubernetes. Um, yeah, so lately we have a lot of these uh, movements, a lot of this new techy stuff like... Uh, Becoming Kubernetes native, uh, implementing GitHub's methodology. Uh, so this is tied to an interesting uh, new approach, uh, moving your test inside Kubernetes, making your test event driven to react on uh, Kubernetes events. And yeah, this is an interesting new concept. The tool which allows this is TestCube. So I think I even gave more than... <laughs> A one-liner so yeah i'll start creating the suspense by <laughs> stopping here okay then i believe we are ready to get started uh dan has an amazing presentation for us so we're going to share that with you guys and talk a little bit about this interesting uh practice that's asynchronous testing and how to do it in kubernetes so the floor is yours dan go ahead yeah so um as we all know, software testing, well, it's an essential step in the development process, and that ensures us quality, reliability, and compliance of all modern applications. Um, software is growing in complexity, testing, and testing on multiple levels is necessary to, well, deliver a high-quality product. So, synchronous testing, well... Synchronous testing is pretty much uh, testing we are all used to in our traditional CICD pipelines, traditional flows. So we have our pipelines where we build our application, we um, run our unit tests, we run our integration tests, other tests. Then we also have our pipelines where we deploy an application. And when we deploy it from our CICD pipelines, we also run, let's say, end-to-end -end tests, performance tests, smoke tests, whatnot. And we see, I mentioned the term CICD pipeline a lot. So um, there are a couple of challenges here. Um, there are a lot of uh, CICD vendors. Um, we all like, I don't know, GitHub Actions, uh, Circle CI, the Travis CI, whatnot. And one of the first challenges is uh, different CICD tools or vendors have different levels of support for testing and specific testing tools. All of them have their own domain-specific language, uh, their set of features. Uh, some of them have better support for this. Some of them have better support for that. Um, I mentioned a lot of uh, different tests, um, running a lot of tests, a lot of different tests. Well, that requires resources. And more, like it says here, more tests means more resources, which is means a larger expense. Also, um, I mentioned a lot of uh, different tests. That means we need to write uh, specifications and jobs for them. So CACD pipelines grow in complexity. Um, also, a lot of us like GitOps and now how to uh, incorporate the end-to-end -end tests, the performance tests into our GitOps flow. Um, and last but not least, it may even be the most important uh, bullet is um, last year we had a lot of malicious exploits, attacks, and a lot of them, a lot of systems were exploited through CICD pipelines. So that's also a big topic. So yeah, that are all of the challenges which are encountered in synchronous testing. So now let's see, well, not to start with just problems, let's see a bit what can we do about it. 
like it was mentioned in the title, so asynchronous testing. Well, that is a powerful practice for ensuring the reliability and performance of software. And we ensure that while we trigger our tests by Kubernetes and external events. For example, we let's say we could define one set of tests to be triggered when a new version of an application is deployed, another set of tests to be triggered when an application, let's say, gets scaled up and down, third set of tests can be triggered when, uh, let's say, a change occurs in the application configuration. When we run tests with a dedicated tool like TestCube inside Kubernetes, that provides us a more secure and better option compared to what we mentioned, what I mentioned with uh, synchronous testing and traditional CACD pipelines. What benefits do we get? Well, first and the most obvious is um, we decrease the complexity of CACD pipelines and with that, we also reduce the attack surface by decoupling the test orchestration and execution. Um, resource management is improved. We can leverage Kubernetes for resource management and we can uh, more fine-grained allocate the resources for our tests because they run in Kubernetes. Um, also, we get enhanced security. Uh, our tests run inside our infrastructure. They run close on our applications, uh, to our applications. We can feed them properly based on uh, paints, tolerations, node selectors. We can feed them exactly where they need to be executed. So that are some of the key benefits of asynchronous testing, but we're still talking high level. So surprise, surprise, we are introducing TestCube. So TestCube is an open source uh, Kubernetes native testing framework that enables automation of testing tools inside the Kubernetes cluster, simplifying the CACD pipelines. And when it comes to synchronous testing, um, TestCube enables it with a feature called Test Triggers, which exposes a Kubernetes custom resource definition for configuring test executions based on Kubernetes events. So, yeah, um, TestCube, it's a pretty interesting framework. Uh, it's pretty cool. I really enjoy developing it. So um, check it out. There will be references for all of the tools, frameworks, uh, whatnot they mentioned here. The last slide will mention all of them. Uh, but now I mentioned test triggers. Uh, let's go to the next slide and see what's there about. Test triggers are the thing which enable asynchronous testing. In its essence, a test trigger defines an action which will be executed for a given execution. And in test cube terms, an execution can be a test or test suit when a certain event, let's say Kubernetes event, um, config map gets created, gets updated, ingress uh, gets deleted, deployment gets scaled up or down, deployment uh, image gets updated. Uh, on a specific Kubernetes resource occurs. So Kubernetes resource, like I mentioned, that's a config map deployment, the usual Kubernetes uh, resources. Um, also, uh, test triggers are uh, exposed via cast Kubernetes custom resource. So that's how we achieve Kubernetes native. And uh, why I mentioned in the second bullet, GitOps friendly, well, you can automate creation of your tests and test triggers. You can put the definitions in your Helm charts, in your customized manifest, um, plain Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes YAMLs, where not. Um, they are intuitive and they are feature rich. Um, so also an interesting thing, uh, they support also Kubernetes resource status conditions to ensure the Kubernetes objects are in a correct state before triggering the actual test or test suite. So this is a YAML for a custom resource or for a Kubernetes object. We can see uh, the first couple of lines, API version kind, metadata are all standard uh, Kubernetes fields. The interesting part is in the specification. So we have, we can select a resource uh, a Kubernetes resource where you say, do we want to uh, 
target uh, deployment, a config map, whatnot. Resource selector is how we identify a specific resource. We do we want to identify it by name or n- namespace or by using labels. Event is a um, Kubernetes event on which we should uh, react. Uh, that can be, like I said, um, deployment got updated, uh, scaled down, uh, ingress got uh, created. Uh, I don't know, service got deleted. Condition spec is uh, for the Kubernetes resource status conditions. If we want to wait until, let's say, deployment has at least one healthy pod or all pods are healthy, action action currently is we can only execute uh, tests or test suits, but there are plans to add delete uh, and some interesting stuff. Execution can be a test or test suite, and delay is if we want to add a specific delay before, um, by uh, from the time a tri- a event triggers a test to the time when the test gets actually scheduled. If uh, we want to make sure that uh, enough time passes for the object to go into the correct state. So yeah, uh, let's see this in action. So I have a Minikube Kubernetes cluster with uh, TestCube pre-installed. Let's uh, install the example application. Okay, it created a deployment, it created a service, config map. Let's validate it's working, okay pods are in running state. Let's assume that uh, it works. So um, I have prepared a couple of tests. So one test is uh, the example application exposes a health endpoint and we can define a health check test using the curl executor. So that is a simple executor which just uses curl to send requests and we will send us get request and our test validates that the return status is 200 and uh, it matches the expected body so i'll just this is how the test looks like i'll just use links from the blog post cube kotl test cube uh test cube offers a CLI, which uh, can be installed as standalone or also as a kubectl plugin. Let's now create a test. We go to the terminal, we paste it, kubectl test, kube create test from a URI, name is health check test, type is it's a curl test in the test kube namespace. Okay, our test got created. We have an application, we have a test, now we're missing a test trigger. So um, we have here a trigger. So our application also has a config map and it has some configuration in the config map. Um, We can create a test trigger which runs the health check test whenever our config map gets updated, which means wherever our application config gets updated. Um, not to be purely old school and use just a terminal, we can run a command called testcube dashboard, which will op- uh, create a proxy and open the testcube UI. So we can see here, we have the health check test. That's the landing page or the first in the sidebar. This Harry Potter scar looking icon is actually where we can see triggers. We don't have any trigger currently. So let's create a trigger. I copy here my example uh, link from the blog post. Just to have a quick look, uh, it creates a trigger for a config map. It selects the config map by name. It reacts on a modified event when config map gets updated. It runs a test with a delay of 30 seconds because the configuration is injected 
as a file into the application and we wait for 30 seconds to ensure that the kubelet syncs the updated configuration into the pod and which test selector, which test do we want to target is the health check test in the test cube namespace. So we apply it. Actually, yeah, that was my, we apply it here. Test trigger got created. We can see it here. When config map modified. Okay. So now um, let's trigger a test. Like we said, uh, we have a trigger when config map gets updated. Um, let's first see the config map. I deployed the application in the test cube um test cube namespace it's called test cube triggers example config let's edit it let's see what does it have oh my mistake test cube aha so config.yaml it injects the config yaml file and it has two fields one called crash, one called slow. Let's say we update the crash field to true. We close this. This got updated. And like we said, um, we configure a delay of 30 seconds. So after exactly 30 seconds from the time the config map got updated, this here should trigger these tests. Let's give it some 10, 15 seconds more or less and wait it out. Okay, so yeah, we can see our health check test got triggered. It's running. Uh, it, what, is it, what does it say? Okay, it passed, it's working. So yeah, um, that is a really brief example of test triggers. For a more detailed and more in-depth guide, you can check out all of these links. Uh, first one is, yeah, of course, test cube, check it out. It's a really cool tool. It's uh, really easy to set it up and install it. Second is documentation about test triggers. If you want to easily get started, uh, try it out, see what uh, ex some examples. And the third one is my uh, blog post on asynchronous testing where uh, the, I have created an example service and I cover how to, well, install test cube, create some tests for the example service, create some test triggers and trigger them. So hopefully it's intuitive for test cube users. I'm open to feedback. Uh, if you encounter any issues, please feel free to raise an issue in TestCube uh, GitHub repository. Yeah, and another thing, where would people go to if they need support? Um, if it's not on a GitHub issue, we're also super responsive on Discord. So please join our Discord. Our team of engineers is amazing at it. You will literally get a response in no time and we'll help you get set up whether you're just starting or you're a more experienced test cube user and dan do you have any last things to say so um test cube is really an interesting tool um it is really powerful uh with kubernetes native becoming increasingly popular with GitOps in becoming increasingly popular uh, test cube fits perfectly. So um, feel free to try it out. Uh, you will find quick examples how to quickly get started, uh, quickly create tests. Um, I think just from the quick start, you'll realize how much potential and how powerful it is and how you can make your system more secure, more resilient, uh, more secure. So yeah, check it out. Yeah. Thank you. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.